uh, am I audible? Yeah, I think you are uh, audible. Okay, okay, cool. So I think uh, we'll get started. Guys, is the slide visible? Yes, Ashik, it is visible. OK, um, like uh, hello, everyone. So we have started these types of classes for the first years for you to get uh, introductory. Uh, these are introductory classes for you to get introduced to how robotics is and what are the basics of, are there for the robotics and how you can like move in uh, creating small, small bots. And obviously, this will be useful for you when you move to a second year, wherein in second year, you will have to do your mini projects in the club. So that's how uh, we have started. We have initiated these classes for you. So the first topic will be uh, on the mechanical aspect that is forward and inverse kinematics. It will be taken by Ashik Rahman Anwar Basha. He's your uh, third year senior from mechanical department. Yes, Ashik, you can start. OK. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, in, for today's class will be about uh, forward and inverse kinematics. So before we look into forward and inverse kinematics, we need to understand what exactly manipulators are, right? Robots in general. Uh, the technical term is robot manipulators. So uh, robot manipulators is uh, any um, machine that replaces the uh, effort of humans without even any human interference, right? In, sorry, intervention. So without the human being present physically there with the robot, uh, the robot will autonomously work or semi-autonomously work, and that's what a robot uh, stands for. Now, um, so what exactly are the examples of different types of robots? Uh, we have a Davinci surgical robots. Those robots are used for uh, surgery uh, and do with minute uh, precision. We have uh, uh, a, sp a spirit opportunity, the robots that uh, are on Mars right now, and they are uh, an example of uh, wheeled uh, robots. So yeah, these are a few of the examples of what robots are. Fine. So what are the different parts of the robot? So you have uh, links and joints. You have end effector. You have actuators. You have uh, controller drive. Uh, you have controller, or you can say the driver, and then you have the operating panel. I'm going to show you a CAD diagram right now, uh, which me and my friend uh, did a few months back for our project and uh, that'll be uh, useful, like easy for you to understand. So, uh, okay. This robot is very, uh, very simple uh, in its, uh, like we made it, a, we made a very simple design of a very, uh, of our project robot. So this is uh, a cylindrical manipulator. Um, so if you look at this, like I said, uh, the first one is links and joints. Right. So we're going to look what exactly are links and what, what exactly are joints. Uh, links are basically uh, members that cannot be uh, or that, that are used for the. Um, giving a skeletal form to a robot. So the links are what gives structure to a robot. You can keep it uh, that way. So this is one link. Other link is over here. The next link is over here. And finally, yeah, so we have three links in this robot. The next one is joints. Uh, joints are usually um, um, like they connect these two links in a very uh, specific manner, right? Uh, there are a few types of links, right? Uh, like uh, revolute links, prismatic links, and so on. Uh, prismatic links means, as you can see, this robot, we can uh, move it uh, front and back, meaning the motion here is linear, okay? Whereas if you look at revolute, revolute is going to be rotational. So I hope you guys understand what I'm uh, trying to express here. And uh, yeah, so this is what we mean by links and this is what we mean by uh, joints. So next one, we have end effector. End effector is basically like uh, the uh, robot's hand, right? That is what manipulates the object. That's what uh, used for, uh, that's what, uh, you know, does all the material handling. So in this robot, if you take for an example, this is said to be the end effector. So it's basically a two jaw gripper, meaning you can, hold on basic uh, objects like cube or the cuboids and uh, and that's what we use this end effector for if you want to look at the more if you want to look at the more advanced form of the end effector uh, you can go here 
this is a four joint defector and this is this was the actual uh, bot we uh, prepared for the competition so uh, here you can see this four uh, jaw mechanism and this is also an example of end defector and uh, this is used for uh, it has more uh, you know uh, what he said can grab more objects with more ease compared to this joint so this is an end effector. So if you want end effector, a uh, practical example of end effector, take a human uh, arm, for example, your hand and your fingers is what an end effector is all, all about. Next one, we have the actuators. Now, actuators are the ones that uh, do all the uh, movement. They are the muzzle of the uh, uh, robot. So uh, if you look at the articulated arm here, you can see that uh, we have attached a motor. So drive motor, this is what it actually, this is what moves the uh, revolute joint up and down, right? Up and down, it rotates it. So uh, this is known as an actuator. So essentially motors or the hydraulic cylinders or pneumatic cylinders, this is all examples of actuators. They can actually move the links up and down, okay? So next one is a controller or a driver. A controller or driver is the brain of the, uh, controller is the brain of the robot. It is what does all the calculation. It is what does all the motion and uh, it is what, decides when to grab or uh, it decodes it to uh, understand what the operator is trying to say and it is what you know converts this information and converts it into robot language right and that is what a controller is all about driver is used to connect the controller and the motor right drive uh, controller can't directly drive uh, um, motors due to some uh, uh, current uh, issues i'll tell you about them later but for now, just keep in mind that drivers are the uh, are the bridge between the actuators and the controller. The next one, we have the operating panel. The operating panel uh, basically is the uh, um, interface, so user interface for the robot. So uh, the user can talk with the robot using the operating panel. Okay, fine. These are the different parts of the robot. I hope you guys are uh, clear. Next one is the joints. What exactly do we mean by joints? What are different types of joints? The first basic type of joint is the uh, revolute joint. Revolute joint, like I said, uh, in the CAD diagram I showed, uh, it can rotate about an axis. In this case, it's the z-axis. As you can see here, it's in the z-axis, you can rotate it. And next one is the uh, prismatic joint. Now, prismatic joint, also known as a linear joint, is used to make linear motions. As you can see here, as you can see here, up and down motion. So um, next one is hooks joint. Hooks joint is also known as a uh, universal joint and universal joint means it's same as revolute joint, but it has two axes of rotation at the same uh, point. Here is only one axis, here is two axis. So hooks joint is pretty uh, commonly used in many robot manipulators. I'll show you at the end of the session if you want or interested. Uh, next is the spherical joint. The spherical joint uh, uh, is basically a ball and a socket joint. The shoulder and the uh, upper arm of your uh, of human body is a spherical joint, ball and socket joint. Essentially, uh, here you can see. Uh, so, to look at this, you will see that there's a link and there's a ball, right? So this ball will be able, uh, and that's said to be a ball and socket joint. Okay. So all these joints are uh, used depending upon our use cases. Fine. So uh, there are two types of manipulators um, in uh, robotics, broadly classified at least. We have spherical man, uh, we have uh, serial manipulators, and then we have parallel manipulators. Right. Serial manipulators means uh, the traditional industrial robots that you see, or your human arm example is a serial serial manipulator. It basically means that there is no uh, uh, closed chain in this whole robot. Okay, uh, as you can see from the definition over here. So uh, if you look at this, this is a pure example of serial manipulators. Here you can see that if you look from the side view, there's one link over here, the other link over here, the other link over here, and there is no closed chain or closed uh, links that is being for, uh, present. So we can call this a serial manipulator, which means one link is connected to the other link just by one joint. Okay, I hope that's clear. Uh, so yeah, this is what a serial manipulator stands for. Uh, sorry, this is the basic definition of serial manipulator. So what are the types of serial manipulators? We have different types. We have Cartesian manipulator, we have cylindrical manipulator, SCARA manipulator, spherical manipulator, and articulated manipulator. So um, yeah, 
Cartesian uh, Cartesian manipulator. In Cartesian manipulator, like it showed here, is going to there is going to be all uh, all linear joints. This one here and two here, right? But for revolute, it's going to be the exact. Uh, uh, sorry, the revolute is not going to be there. It's only prismatic, like this. So, uh, guys, one more information. Uh, while drawing a robotic uh, body diagram, we will always have a prismatic joint represented this way, and uh, a revolute joint represented in the form of a cylinder. Okay, so three parallel, uh, sorry, uh, three uh, prismatic joints. You can see this is a Cartesian manipulator, and this is the uh, workspace of the robot. Workspace means the robot will be able to uh, do anything that you give within this cube. If it's outside the cube, the robot won't be able to uh, reach that object, and hence it won't be able to manipulate that object. Cool. Uh, example for Cartesian manipulator is this is known as a gantry crane and it's uh, used for lifting heavy objects and placing it somewhere uh, in other places. And this is more popular these days. This is known as a um, 3D printer. And uh, this is an this 3D printer is a very good example for Cartesian manipulator. There is no revolute joints, only prismatic joints in this. Next one is the cylindrical manipulator. In cylindrical manipulator, as the short form suggests, there is two. Uh, prismatic joints and one revolute joint, like this. Okay, when there's two revolute joints, sorry, one revolute joint and two prismatic joint, we call it a cylindrical manipulator. Okay, uh, fine. This small uh, circular blob is what you would call as a end effector. There's another prismatic joint here. There's another prismatic joint here. Revolute joint here. The best example again is the cat diagram I showed. So uh, revolute joint, prismatic joint, and uh, prismatic joint. So uh, this is the workspace again. This is the workspace of the uh, cylindrical manipulator. Uh, and then examples are tower cranes, right? Tower cranes are essentially the cylindrical manipulators. This hoist can move here and here, and uh, the rope can uh, move the uh, object it's holding here and here, up and down, and revolute joint essentially to rotate about an axis. Fine. Uh, next one is the SCARA manipulator. SCARA manipulator means uh, there are two revolute uh, joints and one uh, prismatic joint, as you can see here. So here, note this: that two revolute joints are about the same axis, right? They are parallel to the z-axis, and there's one prismatic joint again, which can move up and down. This is the workspace of the uh, SCARA manipulator, and this is an example of SCARA manipulator. You can see this. Uh, there's a YouTube video about this where uh, I'll share it uh, later in the chat box. Fine. And spherical manipulator, it's very similar to SCARA manipulator, except uh, this time the second uh, revolute joint's axis is actually perpendicular to the z-axis. Okay, it's perpendicular. Uh, here it's along the z-axis, and this one is perpendicular to z-axis. Again, a prismatic joint, again it can move uh, front and back, and this is the uh, workspace of a spherical manipulator. Next one is an articulated manipulator. Best example is a human arm. It is basically uh, three uh, revolute joints, one, two, and three, you can, as you can see here. And in effector is attached over here. Um, this is the workspace of an articulated arm. This is most commonly used in uh, uh, industries due to its uh, like you know wide range of motion and its uh, stability. And this is a very standard example of uh, um, articulated manipulator. And uh, this is like it has three revolute joints. And again, end effector here. So next is parallel manipulator. Parallel manipulator means uh, um, here, unlike serial manipulator, all the joints are interconnected, meaning all the, sorry, all the links are interconnected. Uh, and they all put their efforts together to make the robot work. Advantages is high precision and uh, compactness. So example of parallel manipulator is this, right? This is an example of parallel manipulator. You can see that there are three links over here and they're joined to the same end effector base. So there are three joints and you can see they form close links and hence they're called parallel manipulator. Example, standard or industrial examples for a parallel manipulator is a steward platform. Steward platform is used in um, flight simulations, right? So that's why we use a steward platform. Right. <laughs> So uh, let's get started with the uh, kinematics part. Uh, until here, any questions? Do you guys have any questions?
Fine, okay. Then I'll start continuing. So forward kinematics. Um, forward kinematics uh, means that, let's say you have a robot and uh, you want to control your robot, right? But you take a remote and you, you individually control all the uh, joints, right? It's not going to be practical. Uh, it'll take a lot of time and it'll take a lot of uh, skill to do it. So uh, to change the way of understand, uh, to change the way we work with robots, we uh, people came up with kinematics. So kinematics means a um, set of equations that can describe the motion of the robot, right? So there are two kinematics, uh, types of kinematics again, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Now forward kinematics means that the use of kinematic equation to compute the position of the end effector from the specified values of the joint parameters. Okay, right now it will be a lot of uh, buzzwords. I'll uh, break it down slowly. Uh, it's nothing. Uh, you have the joint angles or you have the joint position and with that you're calculating the end effector's position is what it, is what we mean by uh, forward kinematics. And uh, in forward kinematics, the known parameters are again joint parameters. The unknowns are the end effector coordinates. Okay, I'll do an example and after that you'll clearly understand. And the application of forward kinematics are uh, robotic simulation or computer games and even animation. Now, robotic simulation means I, if you attended the previous workshop, it was on robotic simulation and that they, like, those programs, like those softwares, they use this robotic simulation, sorry, uh, forward kinematics in their uh, program uh, inbuilt. So uh, that's what we mean by uh, robot simulation. So next is inverse kinematics. Uh, inverse kinematics is the opposite of the forward kinematics. So we have the uh, end effector's position coordinates over here, like yes, uh, and these are known parameters, and the joint parameters are the unknown parameters. Okay, applications. So in case of uh, real-time uh, robot control or in case of any automation, we use uh, inverse kinematics. Okay, so when we use inverse kinematic equation, the remote only needs to focus on the end effector's position and remaining all joint angles are just calculated from the equation we put, into, put inside the robot's controller. And this is what we call as the uh, inverse kinematics. So this is an example, uh, I've got from Google. So uh, here we have the, uh, uh, here we have the uh, like the joint parameters, right? We have theta one and theta two, which are known, and we are calculating the end effector's position. Okay, and then um, in uh, inverse kinematics, we have the end effector's position, and we are calculating the joint parameters theta one and theta two. So, uh, any doubts up to this point? Anyone? Any doubts, no matter silly, uh, everyone else will uh, be able to, you know, get to know from your doubts. Any questions? No can you explain this inverse kinematics? Yeah, bro. Can you please explain uh, again the inverse kinematics? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, fine. Inverse kinematics means, uh, okay, let me explain with this bot over here. Okay, I'm gonna hide this because we don't need this. Okay, visibility, visibility, visibility. Okay. So take this robot for an example. Okay. Now let's say that you know the position of this uh, end effector, right? You know the position of this two uh, jaw clamp mechanism. And you don't know where exactly the joint. We don't know if the joint is over here, or we don't know whether it's here, or we don't know what is the angular position of this joint. We don't know anything. We only know the position of the end effector. We know what are the dimension parameters of the robot. Like this is 10 centimeter, this is 20 centimeter, this is 10 centimeter. We know this because manufacturer would have mentioned this in his data book. So we know all these parameters, and we only we, we also know the end effector position, but we don't know the joint parameters. So that's what you're supposed to calculate. We are supposed to calculate joint parameters using inverse kinematics. So uh, what we'll do is we'll calculate a set of equations from this uh, manipulator. We'll uh, use some trigonometry and do some basic uh, calculation. And using those set of equation, if you input the end effector position, you'll get the dynamic uh, joint angles or joint positions 
uh, as required. So I'll show an example after this. After this presentation, I'm going to show an example. I'm just going to write everything down. I'm going to show it. I'm going to show an example. So and I think you'll understand it uh, better uh, then. So I hope you got somewhat a picture. Um, So anyone else doubts or is that doubt clear or you need more clarification on that? Yeah, clear as yeah. oh, okay. well. So anyone else guys? Uh, I, I know a few of great tags are also here. You can also ask questions. Great tags, tags, anyone? Okay, um, fine then. I'll go to the next part. In case of any doubts, do ask me uh, and I'll explain it to you. All right. Fine. It's kind of presentation. Cool. Okay, so um, yeah, so I'll derive some kinematic equation, and I wrote a code for uh, showing how the kinematic equations work. A Python code, so it'll be easy to understand. So uh, let's take the first example that we'll be working on. We'll be working on a revolute joint followed by a prismatic joint. I hope that makes uh, that's clear. So. Yeah, I'm going to draw the diagram. We have a revolute joint over here. And then we have a link. A prismatic joint. And then you have the end effector. OK, what we are going to do is we are, we are going to calculate the inverse kinematic equation. For this particular con okay, this is not any manipulator that, that's existing. It's only a, I, you can say it's a it's a cylindrical manipulator, but without the prismatic joint over here. Okay, we only have two joints to make it simple. Uh, I have doubt. Yes, yes. The axis of the prismatic joint is horizontal or it's vertical? It's horizontal. It's horizontal. It's horizontal. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'll draw the axis right now. Wait. Uh, the axis. X and I guess this is Y. Why didn't make any mistake in coordinates? Okay. So yeah, the revolute axis is over here, and the prismatic axis is over here. It's horizontal, like you said. So till this, it's clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Fine. Cool. All right. So let's start naming the uh, links, and we'll start naming naming the joint parameters. Uh, let's just be a1, let this be A2, let this be A3, and let this be the uh, prismatic joints extendable length. Okay, I showed in the CAD diagram that you can actually move the uh, prismatic joint. So assume that right now the prismatic joint is in its zero position, and we are going to derive the, sorry, not zero position, D1 position, right? It's offset or its uh, length is uh, at D1. Okay, fine. And uh, the input parameters are uh, X and Y of the end effector. And we have the uh, revolute joint and we have prismatic joint, okay. The uh, D1 is the uh, prismatic joints parameter, joint parameter, and revolute joints joint parameters, theta one. Okay. So assume this to be the front view, meaning let's look from the top view. 
you will have a cylinder a cylinder circle which is the top face of the cylinder and you'll have the coordinate axis x and uh, y you will have a link 45 degree to the coordinate axis we draw it for sim for understanding better so that the coordinate axis don't overlap with the um, link and then we have the prismatic joint so let's assume right that the uh, the robot is at the angle theta 1 from the the link a2 is at an angle theta 1 from the uh, x axis and a3 obviously follows it and this is d1 and that's theta 1 okay fine so just a color of this this is the known parameter x and y so till this is clear right okay yeah fine all right so so if you are familiar with basic uh, trigonometry you know that uh, when x and y axis are actually not basic trigonometry basic math you know that the x and y axis are actually perpendicular so we get a 90 degree over here so we have theta 1 we have 90 degree we have extendable length d1 now our main aim is to calculate or we need to express uh, the known parameters with the unknown parameters. Sorry, unknown parameters with the known parameters. So we need to calculate for theta one. We need an equation for theta one, and we need an equation for d one, which is the extendable length of the prismatic uh, joint. So theta one and d one equation, right? We're going to derive it now. So uh, the thing that comes to your mind first is theta one. It's very easy. Theta one is equal to sorry tan theta one is equal to y by x right meaning theta one is equal to tan inverse of y by x so you know the y position you know the x position calculating the tan inverse will give you the uh, theta one parameter so i hope that's clear and then similarly for uh, length uh, d1 right we know that we have uh, Pythagoras theorem so um, using Pythagoras theorem, you can say using Pythagoras theorem, you can say that a1 plus a3 plus b1, the whole squared is equal to y squared plus x squared, sorry, x squared plus y squared. And uh, solving for this equation, you will get x square plus y square minus a2 minus a3 so this is the equation for d1 this is the equation for theta1 so uh there is any doubts till now no doubts okay okay man, you're fine all right um okay then. I'll, do, I'll stop sharing so this is the equation right now and this equation what i did is i converted it into code and i for visual uh, is i um, like we can manually enter the parameters and you'll get the output okay uh, output in a 3d uh, format so stop sharing okay so we have this fine all right so if i run this program we have an rp manipulator so one enter the coordinates 100 let's say 200 and this is the, uh, 100 like is the x position and uh, 200 is the y position uh, x comma y i'm inputting that those coordinates and uh, i have already initialized the link lengths which is uh, a1 a2 and a3 to be 100 right and in case I don't input any x, y, z coordinates, the default values will be 200. So if I run this, oh wait, oh, okay, I need to run this here. We can enter. You can see that this is the revenue joint. You look from the top view, you can see this is theta one. This is the uh, this um, uh, thick sections are the uh, links which are fixed, right? This is uh, a one. This is a two, and this is a three. Whereas the small green portion is the, uh, the B parameter of the prismatic joint. So uh, you can give any output you want. Like uh, let's say uh, 1000 by uh, 1000 by 1000. 
and you can see that the prismatic join is extended to this much. So this is just a crazy parameter, and practically it's not possible. Uh, so yeah. So now, since we derived the kinematic equation for this manipulator, uh, we don't need to manually control any joint, right? We can just control the end effector position and all the uh, joints will be di uh, dynamically controlled, right, in real time. So this is a very good example, a uh, very simple example. Uh, any doubts till now, guys? Any doubts, any questions? Okay, then uh, we'll move to the next part. Um, all right. Fine. Uh, we'll work on one more example, and I'm, uh, we'll be open to any any random question. Okay, out of the box in any uh, robotics. So robotic questions. So now we'll work with uh, we work with the RP configuration, right? Now we'll work with RR configuration. Now RR configuration is somewhat bit more complicated than any other uh, parameters because it's all revolute. So there's going to be a lot of angles. So uh, so let's get started. Um, you have a revolute joint over here at the base, like usual. You have another joint over here. Okay. That's this joint. And then you have one more joint over here. And then you have the end effector. Okay, I said an RR configuration. I do uh I do two level points. I just one minute. Uh, okay, I'm sorry for that. Um, Okay, I had a little confusion. Okay, now it's clear. Sorry, uh, the RR configuration is this way. You have a revolute joint over here. Okay, and then you have a link over here and a horizontal link. And then you have another uh, revolute joint over here. And this is how it is. Okay, this will be A1. This will be, uh, okay, this will be A2. A3 and A4. Okay, so we have four uh, links right now. And then we have uh, two joint parameters again. It's going to be theta one, theta two. Let's keep the base frame very similar to the last uh, type. Z axis, along the Z axis, all the uh, revolute joints. Uh, be, it, uh, be it this revolute joint or this revolute joint, they are parallel to the Z axis. All right. So, uh, are the two the distance between the two are fixed or not? Oh, uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's no prismatic joint here, only revolute joint. So, uh, in in uh, in this RR configuration, there will be no change in length, there will be only rotation. Okay, 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 fine. So, yeah, then uh, we have x, comma, y, which is the no, uh, which is the parameters that the user would give, right. We need to calculate. So we need to solve for theta one and theta two. Solve for theta one and theta two with known parameters to be known parameters. Okay, excuse that. To be x, y, a one, a two, a three, and a four. This a one, a two, and a three. The user builds this robot, and he would have given the information in his data book. You can just refer that when you get the values. X and y are the use the have we as the customers would give it. So, um, fine. All right, so again, from the top uh, view, we'll see this. Russell Roddy coordinate axis, X and Y. And then we'll have the uh, revolute joints. I'll just represent them. Okay, cylinder's fine. 45 degree and 
another offset angle. Okay. This will be x comma y. And uh, this will be y, this will be x, and this will be a3, and this will be a4, respectively. Not, not a3, sorry, a2. Stop view can only see a2, right? a3 is the vertical link, so it will appear as a point. Fine, uh, you have a2 and a3, and this is the, um, all right. Now we need to construct few triangles, right? So I'm going to construct, I'm going to uh, draw a line in a different color. Take it purple. Uh, I'll draw a dotted line over here, right? And this is the triangle that we constructed. And uh, let the parameters be theta 1. And let this be theta 2. Okay, theta 1 and theta 2. And uh, yeah, so we need to um, make few other parameters to solve this equation more uh, easily, right? So let's start with that. Mm. Okay, let this length, right, the purple line be R1, and uh, let this angle be phi 3, phi 1, and phi 2. Okay, so, okay, not phi 2 is going to be this. Sorry, sorry, uh, it's going to be this. Yeah, phi 2 is going to be this. So, phi 1 is the whole angle from here to here, and phi 2 is going to be that. Uh, okay, I'll note and think of the redraw the diagram. It's not clear. Right. Phi three. Okay. So with all these parameters that, uh, we have labeled, uh, we can come to a conclusion that uh, theta one right now is uh, phi one minus phi two, and theta two is going to be one eighty minus phi three. If I'm not. Uh, you guys get it because it's going to be a straight line. This line is going to be a straight line. So it's 180 degrees and phi uh, theta 2 is equal to 180 minus phi 3. Basic uh, math. Now from Pythagoras theorem. From Pythagoras theorem, you have R1 is equal to root of x squared plus y squared. And then we have. Um, OK. We have calculated R1 right now. Now, if you're familiar with the cosine law, we can calculate phi 3 and phi 2 from cosine law. OK, so cosine law is nothing. I'll just uh, rephrase because I uh, don't remember it now. Uh, this would be A, B, and C. Let this be theta. So we can say that C square is equal to A square plus B square minus 2AB cos theta. This is what cosine law is. We're going to apply this form to uh, the triangle that we have. Right, R1, A2, and A4. So, uh, okay. So, R1 square is equal to A2 square plus A4 square minus 2 A2 A4 cos phi 3. Okay, and now rearranging the equation, you will get phi 3 is equal to cos inverse. Uh, a2 square plus a4 square minus 2, okay, not minus 2, a2, a2. Uh, it'll be minus r1 square divided by 2, a2, a4. Okay, this is equation number 1. So you have calculated phi 3. Similarly, uh, phi uh, 2 can also be calculated this way. Cos inverse, uh, similarly, cos inverse um, 2, r1, Assume it's right. Okay, phi two is going to be R one A two. Okay, A two and R one. 
a2 and r1 it's going to be r1 square plus a2 square minus um a4 square <laughs> equation number two fine this is equation number two so phi three and phi two is calculated uh phi one is nothing but tan inverse of y by x okay it's phi one nothing but tan inverse of phi by x because it's the angle for this and thus we can say that uh Yeah, so we can say we can calculate. Now we have all the parameters. We have phi one, we have phi two, we have phi three, we have r one, and with all these parameters, we can calculate theta one. So theta one obviously is equal to um, phi one minus phi two, and theta two is equal to one eighty minus phi three. I'm not going to write it down again because it's huge, right? So again, um, I have this equation. Now we can write a code for it, and we can easily visualize it. I'll show it to you right now. Okay, uh, guys can see the screen, right? Okay, fine. So I'm gonna choose a third configuration, the RR configuration. Keep it 90 and uh, 60. Yeah, so you can see that, uh, look from the top view, this is theta one, and this is theta two. Here you can see the angles. Okay, I don't know why this angle is 10,000. I think some could mistake. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can clearly see that we got the equation right, okay, and that's why we're getting proper configuration. You can enter any parameter you want, and you don't need to calculate for the joint, uh, you don't need to worry about the joint parameters. Mm, 120. Okay, yeah, I think we need to, okay, I'll do it again. Hundred and twenty. Yeah, okay. So this is updated, different. Uh, so yeah, that's all. Uh, okay, I'll give some negative numbers and show. Um, okay, so initially the orange was this link is this way, but now it's in the other way, right? So that shows you that the code dynamically works. And uh, yeah, so you take in, now with this knowledge of understanding, you can take any robot manipulators uh, that you know, serial manipulators, and you can derive a kinematic, uh, inverse kinematic equation, you can write them in a code, and you can uh, visualize the output and uh, uh, learn on how the robot would react to different environments, right? And you can actually put it into a uh, like practical use also for your projects. Right, if you if a project is autonomous and it requires like uh, real time processing, uh, you can take input inputs from uh, sensors and cameras and uh, using that input, you can uh, plug it in the um, kinematic equations and you can get the required output. Okay, uh, so any doubts till now? You guys can ask any questions. We're almost done with the session. Can you send the PPT in the chat box? Sure. Hey, questions in the killing of us. People, you can come up with questions so that Ashi can answer, be it in any language, either English or in Tamil. Tamil is not in Tamil. So you use programming language Python alone, but, but, but different languages can also be used. Any language can be used as long as you have a good understanding on how to use the uh, language. And if you have a good visualization software or you don't need visualization software, visualization software is only for our, uh, like, you know, 
our uh, need for robot it doesn't need right uh, you can write the kinematic equation uh, test it once and if you think it works you can put it into a robot and you can see if the robot ac moves accordingly okay bro thank you okay so that was a good question manika any other questions the language work Uh, okay, someone asked me. Okay, I think Bharat Kumar asked, but my DP or Bharat Kumar, I'm sure. He asked if he could teach Python coding for 3D diagram. Yeah, sure. Uh, maybe in future classes we'll do. Uh, yeah, you guys can place your requirements. That's very much needed. I need to open the chat box for this. How will we use the same operations when we use real motors? Because all we now all we do is put in coordinates, and we are getting the corresponding rotor angle. Yeah, look. Um, you have a robot. You have a robot right now, right? You have joint angles, let's say thirty degrees and sixty degrees, and you know this. And let's say you're moving to. Position such that it's now 25 degrees and 90 degrees. So we have the initial angles. Now we just calculated the final angles. So that's all we need, right? And we need a proper uh, algorithm or proper way to get from the initial point to the final point. And if we figure that out, and there is way to figure it, maybe in future classes I'll go to that also. Um, and using those uh, using those algorithm, you can move from the initial position to a final position. Oh, uh, sure. Thank you. I hope I yeah. hope I answered your question. Okay. Right now, I just did a very rudimentary application of this. Uh, okay. If you want in future classes, I'll show on how to practically implement it. All right. right. Any other questions? Guys can unmute and ask if you want. Tamil is also fine. English is fine. Everything is fine. Okay. Commercial open. Okay, I'll wait for two more minutes. And if there's no questions, I will wind up the session. Okay, should we test uh, using Python code before going into arrangements of the robots? Uh, obviously, uh, uh, yes, Balamurgan, you, you're supposed to do it. You see, each and every time you write a code, right? The code is not always going to be right. Okay, there's always going to be test cases where your code would fail. And to overcome that, you need to keep iterating your code, keep testing your code, put it into hard, full, hard situations and see if the code works, okay? And only if you're satisfied enough that the code actually works, no matter what conditions you give, uh, give then only you can go for uh, uh, you know implementing this code into a robot. Right now, the code I wrote uh, it has a lot of bugs. Obviously, you saw that the angle wasn't uh, proper. It showed 10,251, which is not possible in a real life uh, scenario. So obviously, that's a, that's a bug, and I need to clear that out. So once you're satisfied, right? It's all about debugging. So once you've uh, satisfied with the debugging and uh, satisfied that the code works, you can implement into a real bot. Okay, thank you so much, Ashwin, for the session today. Also that uh, I would like to add up a few more things. For those who have received their membership ID, that is the UID that's been provided to your mail IDs. So we'll be keeping track of your progress. So kindly attend a lot of workshop, uh, workshops or any classes that's being held. 
and also that uh, the most active persons that are the most people who are attending a um, lot of events that is being conducted by the club will receive special recognition at the end of the year and also that inactive members membership would be revoked so be uh, known of this one also so there is two extreme cases even if you are not active, active for over a period of two or three months you will be uh, the membership will be revoked okay yeah thanks to all thank you very much bye okay guys if you want to contact means uh, have my uh, number in the poster or uh, you can just access my team account uh, if you have any questions do dm me or uh, you can ask varivel or uh, varivel anna or uh, saramya ka they will always be there to help you so yeah so you guys wait for a minute and I'll download the attendance sure sure okay i'll upload the video Okay. Fine, uh, Ganesh. I'll do it. Right. So, uh, no other questions, right? Shall we wind up? Okay then. Uh,